Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is uh, Krishnan Narayanan with Itihasa Research and Digital, uh, and I'll be your MC for the day. You know, AI seems to be touching us uh, in our everyday lives. I was fascinated to hear about uh, how AI was crucial for the humanity getting its first photograph of the black hole. Uh, in today's colloquium, of course, we will hear about other fascinating topics of AI. Uh, and we have some wonderful speakers lined up. Welcome to them. Uh, for the inaugural session, I welcome the following onto the stage. Professor Bhaskar Ramurthy, Director of IIT Madras. Professor Mahesh, <laughs> Dean of uh, International and Alumni Relations. Chris Gopal Krishnan, Chairman of Itihasa Research and Digital and Axelor Ventures and Professor Ravindran, head of uh, RBC Desai. Uh, I now request uh, the director to address the colloquium. Good morning to all those assembled here. As we all know, AI is the flavor of the day, month, week, everything. Everybody is talking about AI. Many people are worried about AI. Many people are scared of AI. So uh, if you <coughs> follow the opinion pieces in the media also, you'll find a lot of articles on this. In fact, the, the last two that I read, in the, just in the last three days, one is by one of the uh, founders of Google whom I didn't know about. Apparently, there was a third founder, a guy called Lanier. I don't know. I've never heard of him. You know about him? Anyway, there was a long interview with him in one of the major US uh, media outlets. I don't know which one. And uh, of course, that was more on social media, but he's, you know, a, social media is one of the uh, venues that AI uh, mines a lot for uh, data. So. You know, he was uh, expressing concern about how to deal with social media and uh, uh, interestingly why his uh, temporary or rather quick, uh, I mean, current solution, only solution that he has is to actually, uh, he's recommending something like our uh, our uh, Navaratri Upavasa. He's saying every now and then to go off social media for three days just to see if you can manage it. <laughs> okay, so uh, he has no other uh, solution at the moment. Uh, the other uh, thing I saw yesterday, a lot of uh, discussion also in the strategic, uh, you know, geopolitical strategy, that, that crowd also, uh, because of, uh, you know, competition between US, China and all these things. So, um, there the most interesting thing I read yesterday was that somebody is pointing out that because of this competition, uh, there may be a, a tendency for countries to deploy AI before it's fully tested and in some context and that could be very risky is what uh, saying because you want to do it before the other country you want to do you're afraid and you don't go through the required level of uh, assurance and pointing out that in certain applications this could lead to uh, you know if you're not if it doesn't work as it's supposed to it could lead to unintended consequences anyway there are lots of these interesting uh, cautionary stories and so on uh, so usually these kind of stories come when there is a lot of uh, uh, ex expectation that uh, there's going to be huge changes and therefore that tells you that uh, we are on the cusp of uh, seeing the impact of AI on many many things that uh, matter to us. Uh, uh, I also found uh, there was a recent uh, project that uh, in a healthcare sector that got funded uh, here at IIT Madras and in the review committee there was a little bit of a pushback against uh, use of you know it, i think you can use ai but you can't say you're going to use it because there's a pushback now saying that there's too much hype and it's not going to pro give what you're promising anyway so there are all these uh, you know things that are happening uh, it's all natural because uh, some people are getting excited and over promising some people are uh, uh, you know getting uh, worried uh, worried as usual as it happens about any new technology so all these tendencies you can see and it's our job as a uh, university to not only do research in new areas like AI, but also figure out all these things. Uh, figure out how to work this way forward, how to do it in such a way that it has, uh, you know, that it's uh, um, 
benefits and its potential uh, risks in terms of misuse are all very clear so that we as sensible people can make the right decisions. Uh, so, you know, and uh, not discover things too late, especially like, you know, the security issues, for example, in the internet were discovered, I think, uh, too late. So, instead of doing it like that and trying to fix it later, if you can figure out some of the, um, uh, you know, steps that you have to take to move forward on this in a, in a better fashion, in a more sensible fashion, it will be very good. So, in that sense, as I said, it's not just important to do research in AI itself, come up with new algorithms, new methods, uh, you know, discover better ways of uh, doing machine learning, deep learning, whatever, what have you. It's also important to think about AI itself, what it means, what it means for India in particular, given that we are at a certain point in our uh, development trajectory, very different from that of uh, other countries which are also pursuing AI in a big way, such as the US and China and Europe and so on. So, how do we... Uh, uh, work on this. How do we make sure that it uh, doesn't handicap uh, that uh, you know that we are not handicapped in any fashion with um, other uh, major players, and also that we put it to use to solve our challenges, the ones that are really hurting us from growing into a uh, ready, I mean, ready, uh, meeting our challenges of development. And maybe in this process, if we do a good job, figure out more than uh, new. Uh, uh, um, uh, new uh, ways of looking at it and new, figure out how to thread the way forward, maybe we'll have what, what we do will also benefit the rest of the world. So this is really, from a university point of view, this is really uh, what uh, we should be doing. And in some, this particular uh, effort with Riti Hassan, I think not so much about furthering AI research directly, but looking at all these kind of, uh, the context in which we do this work and how we should, uh, how we should uh, uh, you know, use put AI to use for what uh, India needs the most and how we should handle this new technology in a way in which it gives us a very clear idea of how to benefit from it and how to avoid the pitfalls. So I'm very grateful to uh, Chris Gobalshan as usual. You know, he's doing so many things that are important in, it, in themselves and important for India. And uh, we are very happy as IIT Madras, as his Malva matter, to part partner with him and his organization um, along with many others in doing this. So I wish all of you a very interesting uh, conference or workshop or whatever you call this and I hope that we can um, you know, um, wrap our minds and our arms around this new um, beast if you want to call it that in such a way that it uh, becomes uh, a tool for us to improve our and solve our pro challenge, you know, address our challenges and not something that will worry us as it seems to be, you know, doing to some extent in many con uh, many circles today, because of the sudden way in which it has uh, sort of made its presence uh, felt across the world. So thank you very much, and I wish you all a very very good day. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the insightful uh, address. Uh, of course, he you can all take the the social media upahas tomorrow. But today I request you to do tweeting using the hashtag IITMAI and talk about this conference. Uh, I now uh, request uh, Professor Mahesh to come and share his perspectives. I hope he does share one or two words on some interesting work he's doing on AI and cricket as well. Um, good morning. Um, it's a pleasure and delight to be here at a conference, at a colloquium like this. <clears throat> you know, we are all, I come from, you know, my, I come from an academic uh, profession. And uh, a, the bread and butter product of research is a publication, right? So there's peer-reviewed publications. And just to kind of put things in perspective, there's about a little less than 3 million publications being written up year over year and being indexed in Scopus. Now, all of these are products of students, faculty working together and, and uh, peers out there reviewing it and making sure all the boxes are checked before it gets out into the open. But every once in a while, somebody takes a step back and says, let me look at the whole forest of trees and describe the forest rather than each tree. And those publications are called review, pair, review articles. Those have a very special place in, in the whole archival 
publication system. And I look at this conference as, in some sense, taking the place of a, a review article in the scheme of conferences. You know, take a step back and see where, where AI is going and what it can do, and more importantly, what it cannot and should not do. I hope today's conference, today's colloquium, focuses a little bit of time on what it cannot and should not do. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, AI has been uh, touted as having the potential to crack many uh, rather intractable problems. Um, I happened to learn one this morning uh, from, a, from a person who visited me from Iowa State where the National Research Council in the United States does a ranking of universities and apparently AI has cracked that frontier as well now. They have a methodology by which, based on past history of how universities have evolved, they kind of give you a predictive pathway. The kinds of factors, the reason AI was required uh, in this scheme of things was they track things like how many faculty have moved, where have they moved, uh, how many students have come from which universities. So they have basically built a model of the HR dollar and all the uh, resources that go into making a university function. They've built a model of that uh, collectively for all the United States education system and specifically for each university. And uh, at the end of that exercise, the model gives a particular university a best case scenario and a worst case scenario for their ranking going forward and some points of intervention. And I thought it was a very interesting um, use of AI as a tool that would allow you to kind of think through some scenarios and, and play those out with uh, little expense. Uh, uh, you know, and one that, one that could potentially lead to some um, actionable points. I think, uh, you know, I, I don't know, just, uh, as I think Krishnan talked about cricket, and I think there's going to be some, Raghu is the main PI who led that effort, so he'll probably talk about it in one of his sessions, but, uh, you know, any world that has got data is ready for AI. Is a, is, so the precondition in, in every respect is, data. Now, I didn't say good data or cleaned out data or uh, as long as the data doesn't have a, a, a bias, a, some kind of a falsifier, some, some kind of a, a, a predetermined bias built in, uh, potentially could be used to, to build a model and make some predictions. Now, uh, the one uh, presupposition that I see, and I'm an outsider to the world of AI, so the one presupposition I see in all database models is that the physicist can now be discarded. And I, I'm, my, and in an in a open colloquium, I'm willing to throw out this challenge that you, if, and I've said this in a classroom as well, uh, I'll give you the last 200 solar eclipses, okay? And the time and place of occurrence. If a database model alone can predict the, where the 201st solar eclipse would occur and when, I'm willing to fund a prize for that. A simple mechanistic model did this 400 years ago. Okay, so I think there are certain, uh, this is, there are classes where I think a blending of physics-based modeling with database modeling would probably be more accurate. But by and large, I'll say that uh, in a world which is very rich in data, I think, and where physics is harder to find, like, you know, where the, in most of the places where the physical models are less tractable. I think database models have a, a space to operate. Well, with that, I'll, I'll stop and I uh, wish the colloquium the organizers and the participants all the best and uh, have a good day of deliberation and hopefully we'll have some actionable items at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Mahesh. Uh, I now request uh, Professor Ravindran to hand over the mementos to our speakers.